In today's video tutorial, we are making a sheet cake with a bridal shower theme, and we are just using two 9 by 13 cake layers, which will frost in buttercream and decorate with a bridal gown. Okay, so as you can see, I've already added a layer of our classic vanilla buttercream to the first layer of cake. This will just be our filling. And now I'm going to take the second layer of our sheet cake and add that to the first. My layer is partially frozen so I can easily pick it up and just place it onto the cake. But if your cake was very fragile or soft, you could also keep it on the cake board. And as you can see, I had lined or covered my cake board with foil just so that we can reuse it and just slide it off. And that gives it a little more support if you need it. Um, so next what I'll do is, as with all cakes, I like to let them settle um, and that kind of prevents bulging later on in between the cake layers. So I'm just going to wrap this with plastic wrap and just place a sheet cake pan or two on top. That's going to add just some light pressure to the cake as it settles. Okay, so we let our cake settle for a few hours under the weight of this sheet cake. And you can even get it, give it just a gentle push down a couple of times before you unwrap it. Uh, so now we'll take it off and I'm just going to unwrap our sheet cake. And now it's time to start frosting the cake. So what I'm going to do is first frost the top of the cake and I'm doing that with just some pink buttercream. This is just a light pink. It's actually our Americolor deep pink coloring gel, uh, but just a small amount, so it's nice and light. So I'm going to apply this to the cake, get it nice and smooth, and we'll meet right back. Okay, so as you can see, I have added my layer of pink frosting to the top of the cake, fairly thick. And then around the sides, I did a really thin crumb coat with just vanilla buttercream because we're going to be piping around the sides rather than going for a super smooth uh, finish for the sides. So I have my clear tray that I'm using as my cake base. I put a little buttercream down and the sheet cake has its own cardboard cake board uh, cut down to the size of the cake so I can easily transfer it over to the tray. I'm gonna freeze it for about 15 or 20 minutes until the buttercream feels very firm, and that, that way I can go back in with a hot spatula and smooth everything out. Okay, so now I've just taken the cake out of the freezer. I have my very hot water and a spatula, and I'm just dipping the spatula in the hot water and just gliding over the buttercream to smooth it out. So that's just one of several options you could do to smooth your buttercream. You could also smooth it uh, with a paper towel, if it's crusted over, and skip the freezing process altogether. But I really like the hot knife. I like the hot knife method for this. So um, once it's smooth, we'll move on to decorating around the sides with some piping. Okay, so now that the top is nice and smooth, I'm going to go around the sides with a tip 21. This is just a medium-sized star tip. And I'm just going to apply a shell border and I'm just going to do multiple rows of the shell border. So let me just quickly <laughs> so let me just quickly do uh, one row of shells and then we'll come back in and do a second row. If you're able to, it's nice if you can kind of stagger the shells so that they fall in between two shells of the row beneath. But just as long as the cake is covered, it'll look pretty. So I'm just going to continue this all the way around. And we'll meet back once we're ready to start decorating the top of the cake. Okay, I just wanted to show you really quickly. Here's one finished side of shells. And now I'm going to continue all the way around. Okay, so this is just a basic template that I'm using. You do, do not have to use a template at all if you don't want to. Um, but I'm just going to put this on our chilled cake. The buttercream is firm right now, so I can lay this on without worry about messing anything up. And I'm just going to 
get it set up like I want it to look. Centered onto the cake. And then I'm just gonna add just a little dot here and there so that I have a guide of kind of where my lines are. And then on the bottom, I'm not gonna mark this off because I'm just gonna kind of let the flowers uh, just kind of go up and down on the bottom. Another thing that I did off camera is I just cut the bodice for the wedding dress out of a piece of fondant. For me, that was easier than trying to arrange the flowers in the shape of a bodice. It just kind of has a cleaner look. Okay, so for our wedding dress, we're using all sorts of flower cutters to cut out shapes from our fondant. I'm using fondant uh, thinly rolled with, it has a little bit of Tylose powder kneaded into it. That's an optional step, but it does help you to roll it a little more thin, and it also helps for it to set up a little more quickly. So I'm just cutting out my shapes, and I give it a little wiggle just to make sure that I have a nice clean edge around all of the petals. Then you can just push it out with a paintbrush if you need to. And you can either just work with that shape, or if you wanna give it a little bit more dimension, you can just take a small paintbrush handle and just kind of apply pressure to the middle of each petal. And that just gives you some added detail. And sometimes I go ahead, especially if I'm planning on adding a sugar pearl or drage, I'll go ahead and add a little impression in the middle too. Uh, because my fondant has been sitting out for a few minutes already, you can see it's firmed up enough that it's actually already holding its shape. Um, so that just gives us a little more dimension. And basically you can use whatever flower cutters you would like for this. I just grabbed all of my small and medium sized cutters and, oops, that one didn't work. Um, and I, I'm just gonna use just lots of different shapes and sizes. So you can just work with whatever you have on hand. Uh, you can do some larger ones. I think I'm gonna mix some larger ones into my design, but probably most of them will be small or medium. So you have a lot of flexibility with this design. Uh, we are going to just cut out lots and lots of flowers and we'll meet back in just a few minutes. Okay, so I wanted to add some sugar pearls and dragees to at least some of the centers of our flowers. So I'm just using these sugar pearls. These are Wilton. These are some silver dragees I've had forever. Uh, but just work with what you have. And for instance, if you're doing that, if you're working with the sugar pearls and dragees, you could just take a little piping gel or you could use a glue made from a little Tylose powder mixed with a little warm water. That works well too. And you'll just add a few of your decorations to the middle. And that just gives you a, just a little bit more detail and kind of dresses up the flowers. So I'm gonna do that on several of our flowers. Oh, one more thing I wanted to show was the uh, little ribbon roses. I did do some ribbon roses here and there. So for instance, you could just cut a little strip in whatever size you want and then just start on one end, do kind of a tight curl. And then just keep going as the rose gets larger and larger. This one's probably a little thicker. The fondant's a little thicker than I would normally do, but you get the idea. And then just cut off the excess and give it a little pinch from the back. If you have a lot of excess in the very back, you can take scissors and snip it away, but this one looks fine from the back. So um, so that's all there is to that. I just did a few of these little ribbon roses, but it's nice because it has a pretty look and it also takes up a good amount of space if you need it to. Okay, so now it's just a matter of filling in with our flowers. And if your buttercream cake is chilled I think that's helpful for this part because if you need to pick up your flowers and move them around, you can. But this is a really forgiving design, so 
you probably won't have to do too much adjusting if you've kind of mapped out where your dress is going to be. Okay, so I'm just continuing to fill in with my dress and this takes a little while, but it doesn't take as long as cutting out all of your flowers. But if you don't want to have to cut out so many flowers, you could also space them out further and maybe fill in with a little scroll work or just some piping. Um, or you could make buttercream flowers or little tiny buttercream dots, however you'd like to do it. I just really like the look of the flowers. Um, another thing that I wanted to mention is that I'm also gonna have little leaves here and there. And for the leaves, I'm just taking a little ball of the fondant just give it a little pinch on each side so it looks like a teardrop or like a little diamond. And then just, wow. <laughs> then just make an impression down the middle. And I'm just gonna have maybe a few of these mixed in with the flowers for just another little detail. So I'm just gonna continue working my way down gradually and we'll meet back in just a few minutes. Okay, so I've pretty much finished the wedding dress at this point. Uh, I added a few larger flowers, a few more than I had originally planned because I just like the dimension that it adds. And some of mine are two flowers uh, tall, so I would stack one flower on top of another just to make it stand out a little bit more. Um, so anyway, that part is really simple. It takes a little time, but it's very simple to do. And now I'm just brushing on a little piping gel. I decided I wanted to add some more pearls to my bodice. Um, at first I just had some tiny flowers at the very top of the bodice. Then I decided to go ahead and add some sugar pearls. Um, in this case for the bottom, I'm gonna do the, these in silver. But you saw I just brushed piping gel where I wanted the, the beads to stick. And then you just drop them on. Oops. Okay, so now as a finishing touch, I'm just adding some little groupings of dots, just three at a time, using a small round tip. This is just a Wilton three tip. And I'm just kind of spacing them out. Okay, so our cake is finished. I think it came out really cute. This would be perfect for bridal showers. And as you saw, it's not a difficult cake to make. So I hope you'll give it a try. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.